Hey, we're back on the Vicky Gotti Show. So we're back with another edition of the Vicky Gotti Show, and it was a lot to happen in Baltimore at the um the Know Your Status Baltimore Ball. So we have the one and only Arike to call in to basically tell us our story and what happened and why everything happened like it did. So here we go. Hey, Arike. Hey, what's up? What's going on? So you know it was a lot going on this past weekend in Baltimore. Um. First of all, I want to just ask you, are you all right? Oh, I'm absolutely okay. I mean, if, I don't know if you noticed that after that happened, that I was walking around trying to find my phone that was stolen. So, I was, you know, I'm not hurt at all. You know what I'm saying? And that's why, I, because I know it confused a lot of people, because a lot of people at first didn't know it was me that was involved with that, because I was up walking around not looking, not hurting or anything. You know what I'm saying? So it was just that, and I want to thank a lot of people that have been hitting me up on Facebook and calling me and stuff, because I'm absolutely sorry. Okay, well, that's a good thing to know. But, Arika, can we first of all start off, first of all, what's your category and what you walk to, the, like, for the people who don't know? Um, I used to walk runway. Um, I dabbled in body every now and then, but the, the runway was my primary category. Okay, cool. So now, Arika, what happened? Like, what made, I guess, like, you know, what happened that night? short because I just want to put this out there, you know, people saying that I was chopping people unjustly, well that's not the case. Um, we have started a coalition down in Baltimore here and it's been doing really well, you know, so you kind of, I kind of want to stay being fair, you know what I'm saying, because there's a lot of people who spend money for sex, garments, traveling, and all that to get to the balls and stuff like that, and you know, this is the second annual free ball we had with Kate Holt and his organization. So, you know, when you put stipulations on a flyer or you put certain specs on a flyer, I understand that you do have to follow suit. And that being said, everybody has to follow suit. You know what I'm saying? You know, at one point it was um, certain people that was shopping or made reference to what was going on. And that that being said, that's great. That's frank. That's what you're supposed to do. You're supposed to stick to the flyer. Right. And everybody has to do the same thing. Everybody has to go by those rules or protocols, no matter what house or what person you are. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And it's just, let me just take this for the fact. Um, Jasmine, I want to... Like, well, we're talking know, about Jasmine, a.k.a. China Khan, right? Right. Exactly. Okay. I just wanted to know that it was no shade against her at all. I mean, I live from her vogue. I mean, she performs down. It's just a point that, you know, you have to follow protocol as everybody else does. You know what I'm saying? There was people who got chopped for having, like, red leggings on, i.e. Kitty, Balenciaga. There was people who got chopped for um, just having a lot of colors red, like a couple of ebonies. You know what I'm saying? So when Jasmine came out with an all red shirt, you know what I'm saying, I felt fly to chop her as well. It's not because I don't use her or I don't use the house because I actually have, just like what people think, I, use, I actually have a lot of friends in the house of car. You know what I'm saying? It was just, you're going with protocol. Because it's not fair to a kitty, to half the evidence, to some of the, um, like, other houses out there, visas, etc. If you like this one person who is obviously has the all red shirt on, fly by. So, I, you know, that's why. That's so, what was, so, wait, Enrique, was you the only one chopping, or was there other people chopping, like, cons? Or? Yeah, there was other people chopping. I mean, it was, you know, it was, see, this is what I noticed on panels, and this is the thing that kind of, bothered me, you know what I'm saying, because, you know, my house is not a um, very good place at all, you know what I'm saying, and as far as Baltimore, there's only three of us, you know what I'm saying, I being, no, me and Vaughn, no, yeah, me and Vaughn being the only one there, um, at that night, so, the people that were chopping, it was just that people were, you know what I'm saying, I guess, certain people, this is what I gather, certain people were just tired of it. Certain people felt, felt, felt that they were tired of chopping or tired of doing all the grunt of work alone. And that's what I got out of it. You know what I'm saying? So when that happened and everybody was just staring because the lady from the organization that keep worked for was sitting right to the, um, to the right of me. Okay. And she said that when Jasmine walked, she goes, well, she has all red on. Or she goes, well, her top is all red. Um, should I chop her? And I was like, if that's how you feel. 
She goes, but it's not really fair to anybody else. And I said, I agree. So I went ahead and chopped her because if any grunt was going to come to anybody, I'd rather it come from me. Right. Well, I would, all right. Well, hold on, Enrique. From sources that was, you know, calling my phone and telling me that I think that it triggered the chop for Jasmine was because you, because they chopped Boom. And now is Boom really a lore or what? No, he's not. He's somebody's interested in the house and stuff like that. Somebody I would like to bring the house, but he knows what he has to do to get here. No, that's not, no, that's not the point that, um, Boom, because Boom had on red, but it was like in, in certain stuff, but it was other people. Like, I'm like Kitty, I brought his name up. There was another one. Oh, so Kitty, Kitty Balenciaga was chopped as well this night? Huh? Kitty Balenciaga was chopped as well? Kitty Balenciaga was chopped as well. There was a couple of Ebony's that was chopped as well. So there was a, a lot of people in that perspective category that were chopped because of what they were supposed to have on because the category read a touch of red. You know what I'm saying? And a lot of people had, um, like, red, red on when it's supposed to be a touch. So there was kind of confusion in that category once it was explained, and then it went on from there. Okay, now, Enrique, now let's get to, you know, I guess the fact that everybody want to know. Who hit you, and why did they hit you, and why did this happen, like, the way it happened? Uh, at first, and this is what's really funny, and this is what's really bothering me, um, I know that there was a certain person that came towards me and it asked me what was going on. And even as I was chopping her, I explained, said, it is no shade to Jasmine, but I have to be fair, fair is fair. You know what I'm saying? And then you have people, representatives from Khan coming to approach me, asking me about, um, I'm, I'm, I've been feeling it all night. And mind you, I hardly chopped anybody. I, I chopped one other con because, you know, with realness, you had to have a pink accessory. He had like these really tiny pink earrings on and you couldn't see from where we were sitting. Mm -hmm. They were pink. Once he established that he had the eye ring of pink, I rescinded my chop because I saw it. But there were other people on the judges panel who were giving where it's his pink. You know what I'm saying? So I don't know, I guess from that and from the jazz and thing they thought that was trying. And to be honest, I didn't know who kind of hit me because they didn't come at me head on. It was more so from the side. So this was like basically, let's call it like it was, was it a cheap shot? Uh, very, it was a sneak, a very cheap shot. Because, you know, I, you know, I'm not scared to fight at all. People know this, you know what I'm saying? So the only way, way you can get me down like that is by sneaking me. So I was snuck to the side. But as when she tried to hit me, I grabbed them. You know how certain houses are, so when I grabbed them, I kind of held them as a shield because that's when I guess a lot of other people from that establishment came. So I kind of held them as a shield. So I guess you know that's the reason why I wasn't injured. Okay. Like, so who was this? You who? Okay, who hit you from the side? I didn't know who it was until afterwards, and I found out it was Mousy because I had an altercation with another car. So I'm watching them. I mean, he kind of hit me as well. So, you know, I found out it was Mouncy, and I didn't know that because I have a really good relationship with Mouncy. That kind of shocked me because I'm thinking most of us as leaders that we could have talked it over. That's what I was about to say. How do you feel now, you know, after everything went down? How do you feel about it being Mouncy and, you know, you have friends in House of Khan and nobody helped to stop it? How did you feel after everything? Uh, actually, that's not true. Let me okay. Let that out there. Um, let me ask your first question. Um, I really felt bothered that it was Mouncy because, you know, of the relationship that we have. But that being said, um, as far as nobody helping, that's not true. Okay. Because the house, the house of Ebony came and helped me to help assist me, and then Stacy B. Stewart, she came. You know what I'm saying? So I don't want anybody to think that it just went down and I was by myself, because honestly, I wasn't. And I wanted to thank those particular people, because I don't want to mention their names. You know what I'm saying? I just want to thank those particular people for helping me out. If I was Stephanie, I mean, it's not Stephanie, Stacy, because I'll mention this. Um, I really appreciate it because, you know, even though that I was doing well, things could have been a lot different if things wasn't even, you know, with the, the stack wasn't, um, you know, even. Because once it got even, then it would change quickly. Okay, so now. They also were saying that, how did the, um, the agency feel? I heard the place was trash. Like, you know, I know this was like a bad thing for Baltimore. How does the collate? Well, uh, it's, it's, I think it's a bad thing for not only Baltimore. I think it's a bad thing for the whole scene. Because you have an organization, because the things that we did last year weren't so successful. I mean, you were there last year. Yeah. Well, so 
because they wanted to try again because they got the numbers they wanted for the testing and people just wanted to come have a good time. You know what I'm saying? So, and again, I'm going to say the lady that worked for that, like one of the um, leaders of that organization was actually sitting next to me. You know what I'm saying? So she comes up to me afterwards and asks me whether I'm okay because the only thing I was worried about was my phone because my phone and my camera and stuff were stolen. And she's laughing at me. She goes, after all that, you're just worried about your phone. I was like, yes, because I'm not hurt. You know what I'm saying? I just want to make sure. Right. My camera was like, but I, I'm sure they're upset, and I'm sure they have every right to be upset. You know what I'm saying? Because, you know, whereas last year it was so successful, this year it turned out to be a big mess. You know what I'm saying? But it's just, you know, I, I hope that Keith Ebony can explain to them, you know, how certain things go and just won't alleviate what happens next year, or maybe there'll be better security next year or something like that, or better planning provisions, because I know that. She was very, very dismayed about what happened. But okay, now, Enrique. Oh, okay, now, Enrique, I want to ask you one more question. If you have, you know, I guess one thing to say to the House of Khan, whoever that, whoever was else involved, what would you say? Well, I don't really have anything to say to the House of Khan. What I want to say is to the people that are out there, if you feel that you're being triggered or you feel as though that you're being, like, if, if you do get jumped or feel that you've been triggered, you don't have to sit back and do nothing. Because I plan on pressing charges against everybody, even against my friend or ex-friend now, Mousy. Because the thing about it is I want people to know that, you know, violence is great if you're protecting yourself. One, oh, not great. I mean, not, violence is not great. It's not necessary. And if you're going to be a man, fight somebody one-on-one. -on -one. But if you're going to have get jumped or grouped or something like that, feel as though that you can't fight or scared to get the authorities involved, press charges and stuff like that. Because a lot of people have records, a lot of people don't want to deal with the legal system. So I'm going to tell people, deal with that. You know, call the police. Right. I don't know what's going on. Get people involved. Because what happens is, because, you know, the same person that one of the people that I'm pressing charges with was also Facebook bullying. And when you Facebook bullying, that also can be used in a court of law. Right. You know what I'm saying? So archive those conversations. Save those conversations because when it needs to be, it can be brought up and then it can be used to because that can be premeditated. So, Arike, what are you so basically just saying? So you are pressing charges and taking it to the highest stand? Oh, absolutely. Okay, well, you know, I think everybody heard it first from the Vicky Gotti show. And, Arike, I would love to sit down with you on a personal one on one level. Yeah, that's cool. yeah, sometime. But thank you for calling and letting me know what happened. And I guess everybody, you know, and I just wish you the best. Have a, um, and just say have a happy holiday, Vicky. Yeah, you too. All right. Bye.